got one group that's zooming in and, and uh, met early to send in their uh, uh, prayer requests and their God sightings. And then everybody here, we've got this new little prayer request card. So uh, we had folks fill out prayer request cards and, and um, God sightings. And so um, I just wanted to, uh, to go ahead and share some of those with you here in just a minute. Um, so we will continue uh, streaming live here at 9 o'clock through uh, July. Uh, we weren't sure exactly how that was going to look uh, moving forward. Uh, our church council decided that we, uh, that the Bryson City United Methodist Church is uh, going to continue to use the River of Life as its primary in-person worship service and then uh, also use it for live streaming too. So uh, if you want to join us in person, we invite you to come join us in person. And um, we are doing a pretty good job here of socially distancing, and uh, uh, everybody's wearing a mask but me because I'm a bad boy, bad boy. What you going to do? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. And so... Uh, um, so I, I did, I just wanted to, to kind of share that and, and a couple of other, uh, any other announcements, Terry? Oh, one thing that we haven't really said anything about this year is if you want to, uh, to donate some gear for the River of Life for the uh, uh, end of the season well on a weekend sale, uh, we're still taking that. We're still planning on doing that at the, at the Guest Appreciation Festival. We'll see how that's going to gonna happen. I know the NOC is really... Uh, hoping to see how that's going to happen as well, but the plan right now is to go ahead and go with that. And if we can't set up at River of Life, then um, we'll just see what what we can do. So, anyway, so if you'd like to donate some gear to to uh, to the well on the weekend, feel free to do that. Um, we're grateful for those of you that have uh, continued to give to Wells in Haiti online and uh, here in person, and, and we're really grateful for those that continue to support uh, the Bryson City United Methodist Church and, um, and our mission there and doing um, so much in our community and uh, keeping things uh, running smoothly there, even in the midst, especially in the midst of the chaos that we're all in right now with this COVID-19. And so I wanted to go ahead and transition to... Um, uh, to some of our God sightings and, and prayer requests. Uh, I'm going to... All right, thankful for my pastor and church family. Um, and we are just uh, grateful, grateful for that. Um, prayer request. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to... Sort through all the prayer requests and God sightings. God sighting uh, Blue Heron on the river yesterday. Oh, yeah, that one's especially for Aaron Burt. And so um, an another God sighting. And then oh, more God sightings. All right. Uh, Sam's God sighting is seeing Christina and Sean today, so aw. My God sighting is seeing all y'all. And, um, and then uh, prayer requests are uh, prayers for uh, Christina's knee uh, uh, in that it will continue to heal and, and that um, uh, that will be good. And then um, prayers for... Uh, Peace and trusting what God's promised in all of this. And that's going to play right into um, McKenna probably was looking over my shoulder when I was coming up with this, uh, this message today. So that's, that's part of what we're going to be talking about. And so um, um, <laughs> we want to pray for Tom Womble's kayak. So, Tom, we're praying for you, buddy, and, and that that will show back up. So hopefully that uh, uh, Tom's... Uh, uh, wayward kayak will find its way home and then um, uh, and then uh, Gretchen wants to uh, pray for her mom's decision whether to have a second back surgery or not and just uh, that uh, no matter what she can feel God's peace and God's healing and in all of this and then um, from our folks over in the Sunday school class uh, Marianne Hildebrandt um, 
is uh, fighting cancer and is, is going through some tough times. So we want to lift Marianne up. And then um, Ann Steele, who uh, many of you know, if, uh, if you were following us uh, this spring, even if you haven't been part of the River of Life before, you may have followed us on uh, live this spring. And, you know, Ann's our organist and pianist and awesome. And she's like this super uh, great person. And so she had uh, some uh, surgery uh, this last Thursday. And so we asked that uh, she would uh, prayers for continued healing for her and um, that uh, the uh, masses that were taken out were uh, benign. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and turn our hearts to God in prayer then. Gracious God, we just thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the ways that, that we see you at work in the world around us. We ask that you give us peace. We ask that the world would experience peace through you through your truth, and through your hope. We ask that we might be a part of that peace in the world today. We are grateful for seeing you at work in the world. We are especially grateful in the times that it seems like um, that pain and loss and, and sadness and hurt is just overwhelming. We are grateful for the ways that you show up. And today, O oh Lord, we ask that you show up. We ask that you show up and that you heal our broken hearts. We ask that you show up and heal our broken bodies. We ask that you show up and breathe new life into our spirit so that we might be one with you and one with each other in love. O oh God, we ask that you would watch over us here today and and guard our hearts and enliven us so that we might grow in your word, that we might grow in relationship, that, that we might grow in service so that your kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so today I wanted to start with a, with a little story or, or joke, depending on how you look at it. And there were uh, two friends, James and Harry, who, who grew up. They were childhood friends. They'd been friends all their lives, and, and they were really close. But, but as they got a little bit older, they, they had moved apart and, you know, maybe moved across town. And, and so James had, um, had not seen Harry in a long, long, long time. And so he, he, he saw Harry walking down the street, and he, he ran up to him and said, Harry, Harry. Man, I've been missing you. How's it been going? And Harry just shook his head and says, Man, I just lost everything in a market crash. I just lost all my investments and everything, and I'm bankrupt. And James looks mournfully at Harry and said, It could have been worse. And so they, they part, and, you know, Harry's a little bit like, wow, that was super supportive. And, you know, and Harry goes home, and James goes home, and they, they go their separate ways. And, and about two months later, they, they see each other again. And, and James comes up to Harry and says, hey, buddy, how's it been going? Hopefully things are, a bit, are doing a little bit better. And he goes, oh, man, you wouldn't believe it. Yesterday, my house burned down. We lost the whole thing, and now we're homeless. Well, of course, James, he was taken back a little bit, and he, he looks, at, looks at Harry again and says, it could have been worse. And Harry's like, oh, yeah, how? And so then they, they go their separate ways again, and, and sure enough, about two months later again, they run into each other, and Harry's by himself in a restaurant, and James says, so Harry, how are you doing? How are things going? He goes, it's just awful. My wife's left me now, my, 
I have no kids. I'm just all alone. This is terrible. And James said, it could have been worse. And Harry's about tired of it right now. He's like, are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? What, what do you mean it could have been worse? How could it have been worse than all the things that I've been through in the last six months? And James said, it could have been me. And that's how Harry end up, ended up in jail. So, you know, poor, poor Harry. You know, it's... <laughs> Harry had to be saying, how long, how much worse can get this get? And, and I know some of you guys were going, how long is this joke going to last? But, but so often we say, how long? How long, O oh Lord? Certainly in this time, I mean, how long has it been now? Four months. And our church just decided to, to not open our doors again to keep the protections going for another month and to have services out here, outside, and online to make sure that we protect everybody. But we're all inside going, how long, O oh Lord? How long is this going to go on? It is frustrating. It's exhausting. You guys have heard me say this before. And it's just maddening. And so it seems like every day we wake up, we wake up and say, how long, O Lord? And so today I thought it only right to turn to Psalm 13 because that's how it begins. You see, sometimes we forget that we're the only ones that aren't the ones in trouble. We forget that everyone else is suffering too. We forget that there is trouble in the world. And we forget that God is with us. So Psalm 13 is a good way to remember about that. And so let me read, I'm just going to read the whole psalm. It says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation, and I will sing to the Lord, because the Lord has been good to me. It's been said that Psalm 13 is the perfect lament for any of us because it, it fits any time. And, and certainly I know that it fit the time in the context of the psalmist. But it fits for us today too, doesn't it? So many days we wake up and go, how long, O oh Lord? But one of the things I've always appreciated about the psalms is, is when somebody is crying out and complaining and lamenting to God, we do it as a child would to a parent. We do it because we know that God will act. We may not know when. We may not know how. But we trust that God will act. And so in Psalm 13, we see it broken down. You know, in the first couple, couple of verses, it is wine time, right? Oh, God, is this is going on and this is going on. We've got a pandemic. We've got this, uh, uh, this systemic racism going on. We've got all these things that are going on, and I feel like I'm getting beat up no matter which way I turn. And 
I've got to wear a mask every day. And I do when I'm not talking, just letting you know. How long are we going to put up with this? Seriously. But then the psalmist goes, okay, God, I know, I know you can do this. I know that, that you, can, you can turn the tides if you want to. You are God. And I trust that you can do this. And then by the end of the psalm, the, the psalmist has, has moved already into a time of trust and saying, I trust you because you have loved me since forever and you will love me forever. And I know that. Sometimes I forget that. But I know that you love me and that you love those that are suffering and struggling. But I praise you, God, because of your love, because of, of your unshakable love for the world, and especially for those that love you. How awesome are you, O oh God? How awesome are you? And so Psalm 13 walks us through this, this time of just calling out and frustration and aggravation into a time of asking God, God, please act. A time of prayer. And then it ends up in a time of praise. Thanking God, this, attitu this attitude of gratefulness. Our buddy Sam over here. Sam, raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to call you out. No pressure. Sa Sam, oftentimes when we get together, he reminds us of, of how important living a life of gratitude is. And that if, we are, that if we are filled with gratitude, we tend to respond and act in, uh, gratefully too, don't we? We tend to have grateful responses to other people, maybe even when they aren't being grateful to us, grateful acting to us. But if we keep that grateful response to other people, that's when the world can be healed. That's when God moves in our midst. Because sometimes the only time we see God is through the eyes of somebody else that shows God's love. Sometimes we see it Hopefully, sometimes we show it so that others might see God's love in their lives. Sometimes we, or we wonder maybe even with the psalmist who the, who the foe, who this enemy is. But, but, but today we don't really have to ask, do we? We know who the enemy is. The enemy is this COVID-19 thing that's going around that's wreaking havoc on everything it's wreaking havoc on lives it's wreaking havoc on the economy it's wreaking havoc on us having graceful responses it's re wreaking havoc on our relationships and God created us to be in loving relationships and in this time we're missing that and and I wonder sometimes if that isn't why we're getting so frustrated and I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't have the most graceful responses when I'm getting pushed to the edge. I'm generally a pretty easygoing guy. But I've noticed that over the last couple months, I've blown up over nothing. I've gotten frustrated. I've lashed out at other people, people that I love. And that's not fair. That's not fair to them, and does it help them heal? No. And so I have to constantly call myself out. How does this sound to them when you're speaking to them? How can what you're doing show love to them? You see, because there are a lot of others out there right now that are asking the same question. How long, O oh Lord? 
how long is this going to last? How long is this pain going to last? How long are people not going to care for each other? No matter how that looks. How long? How long is that going to last? But I think Jesus comes along and reminds us that we have to play our part in that. Because when we're asking God, how long, O Lord? I wonder maybe if God is asking us, how long is it going to take you to act? How long is it going to take you to care? How long is it going to take you to heal the world? And so Jesus says to his disciples, he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of a righteous person. And whoever even gives a cup of cold water to one of the little ones, one of the last, the least, and the lost, has given it to me. And truly I tell you, that person is my disciple, and they will not lose their reward. You see, hospitality is one of the most important ancient traditions, caring for each other. You see, back in the early days, they focused on helping provide essentials to travelers, people that were out on a journey, people that might be through hiking the Appalachian Trail. Who knows? But to care for each other, to give each other some food, some shelter, some water, because oftentimes they would go out on this journey and have no support at all. And so when they stumbled across maybe somebody's tent, or maybe a town, they often showed up with nothing. <laughs> and often barely alive. We've seen the, the Western shows where the cowboy comes crawling up the, the bank, you know, it's like, water, water. And it seems pretty dramatic when we're watching it on TV. But at ancient times... It wasn't far from that. And so the importance of, of providing hospitality could be the difference between life and death. And so it was important to provide hospitality, to provide a cup of cold water, to provide food, to provide shelter to those that desperately needed it. But providing hospitality is far more this, than just providing the basic essentials, isn't it? You see, Jesus wanted us to remember that providing hospitality was about building relationships. Providing hospitality is, is about connection. And I think we feel that in our hearts, too. And that's one of the things that's probably the most frustrating thing about all of this is that it feels like we lose connection with each other. I know many of you out there, and I'd say all of us here, when that virus goes away, when there's a vaccine, however that looks, somewhere down the line, and we don't have to say, how long, O oh Lord, anymore? It is going to be a hug fest because we have missed our hugs in this place. But because we love each other, we don't. We do right now what we have to to care for each other because that's what Jesus calls us to do. When we ask, how long, O oh Lord, how long will we suffer? 
May we remember those that are suffering more than we are. Those that are outcasts. Those that just struggle to get by in the world and be grateful. Now, I'm grateful for Dr. Eugene, who we partner with, to be able to reach out in ways through the river of life to provide wells for peop- communities in Haiti. I'm grateful for the Restoration House that, it, that reaches out into the community, into Bryson City through the United Methodist Church and provide food and, and help provide medical care and other ways to, to help those that are really struggling in our community and partners with other organizations that do the same thing. Grateful for the ways that our Pasadon Cafe has been able to bounce back and, and provide meals for people. And so there's one coming up this Tuesday night, 5.30 to 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. 5 to 6.30. That's the real word right there. 5 to 6.30 at the Methodist Church in Bryson City. Come see us. And so we're grateful for the ways that, um, that we can provide, however, even if it's through a drive through handing somebody some food and helping reach those that desperately need hospitality. What if? What if in this time of waiting, we use it as an opportunity to reach out and offer true welcome to those around us? Would they see God? Would they have a God sighting then? That is my prayer. Let us pray. God of welcome, we often ask, how long? Hoping to see you act. Jesus, when your friends argued about power and prestige, you spoke of welcome. Maybe we look beyond our power and welcome the powerless. May those who go unnoticed be welcomed with hospitality. May we find the welcome that you have waiting for us and provide true welcome to those that need it the most. Amen. And so we invite you now to Take five minutes, those that are gathered here, to take five minutes, go find a rock, spend some time in um, meditation and prayer. And how is God calling you to be an agent of welcome where you are? How can you be an agent of welcome in the world? And those that are watching from home or from the fellowship hall or wherever, We invite you to do the same. Spend five minutes in reflection and prayer and listen to God's voice and hear God's message of promise that God loves you forever. Please go in peace. Amen.